The Labour leader is facing calls to resign and the Labour deputy leader could be facing a police investigation. You would have thought this might be leading the news agenda, but instead the subservient and blatantly left-wing political press are too busy putting their energy into stories like this. Conservative source points out tonight that Rishi Sunak has never visited a mosque during his time as Prime Minister. All of his predecessors, Johnson, May, Cameron, visited mosques in their time. Rishi Sunak has held a reception for the Muslim community in Number 10 and sent wishes during key festivals. But considering he's visited most other major places of worship, some think it's surprising he hasn't yet visited a mosque, especially given the rise in community tensions. Who cares? Seriously. I mean, after all, Keir Starmer's last visit to a mosque went really well, didn't it? He was booted out and slammed by the Muslim Council of Wales. Top stuff. Anyway, back to the main point. All this talk of Islamophobia has meant Sir Keir Starmer's shameful leaning on the Speaker Sir Lindsay Hoyle over the Gaza ceasefire vote. Surely a matter deserving of an immediate inquiry and very possibly Sir Keir's resignation has gone quiet. Step forward. Mr Morality, Labour MP Chris Bryant, who let the cat out of the bag on Channel 4. The way we do our business in Parliament is terrible. I mean, we brought ourselves terribly into disrepute, I, I think, on Wednesday. But were you put up to that filibuster or did you take it upon yourself? Uh, a bit of both, if, if I'm honest. I think the whole day was grubby right. and we need a system which doesn't allow um, people to manipulate the rules to be able to get what they want. Yeah, which... Which you did, didn't you? I mean, is that Labour's Chris Bryant engaging in dirty tricks so that the Labour leader could pressure the Speaker into breaking convention to save his skin from a massive shadow front and backbench rebellion in a general election year? You mean, you mean this Chris Bryant, who literally wrote the book called Code of Conduct, Why We Need to Fix Parliament and How to Do It? You mean, you mean this Chris Bryant? who has refused for years to apologise to Nigel Farage for baseless claims that he was funded by the Russians, until very recently. Well, I, for one, am shocked. Shocked! That, unequivocally, is an investigation and potential resignation matter for the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer. So Lindsay Hoyle is certainly facing the consequences. It's been revealed tonight, in fact, in the last few minutes, that the number of MPs backing a no-confidence motion in the Speaker has now climbed to 86. Well, now on to the deputy leader of the Labour Party, Angela Rayner's potential prison sentence. The allegation is that in January 2006, the Right Honourable Member for Ashton Underline brought her council house in Vicarage Road, Stockport, with a £26,000 discount under Margaret Thatcher's right to buy scheme. She was registered on the electoral roll there from 2005 to March 2015. In 2010, she married Mark Rayner, but confusingly... They were listed at different addresses for the next five years. She gave her address as Vicarage Road, yet he gave his address as Lowndes Lane, a mile away. More mysteriously, when she re-registered the births of her two youngest children that same year, she gave her address as Lowndes Lane. Now, under electoral rules, voters are expected to register at their permanent home address. Anyone who knowingly provides false information about the address they are registered to vote at could face conviction and a prison sentence. Tenants must repay some of the discount they received if they sell within five years. The question then, obviously, is was Angela Rayner lying about where she lived to avoid paying this? Well, then today, Guido Fawkes, the political website, published the birth certificate of one of Angela Rayner's children. They then quoted the law. Quote, any false statement with intent to have the same inserted in any register of birth or death, he shall be guilty of a misdemeanour and shall be liable on conviction thereof on indictment to penal servitude for a term not exceeding seven years or to imprisonment. Right. So Angela Rayner obviously denies any wrongdoing, but Guido Fawkes are adamant, writing, either Angela Rayner lied on the birth certificate or she is lying now. If she told the truth on the birth certificate, she was liable for capital gains tax. If she did not, she is in breach of Section 4 of the Perjury Act 1911. Surely the police should have a little look into this. You've also got the fact that Labour MP for, I think it's Fleetwood actually, an ex-shadow cabinet minister, Kat Smith, has now been reported to the Standards Commissioner for allegedly using her taxpayer-funded £11,000 a year stationary budget for campaigning. Now, look, certainly the first two of those are big stories. The Labour leader should face an urgent investigation and could possibly be forced to resign as a result, and the deputy Labour leader could face a police investigation.
This is huge. In my view, it should be leading the news agendas. There are massive questions to answer. Massive. But I know what you all really want to know. When are they going to visit a mosque? Yeah, that's right. But